All right. <clears throat> so I get this question a lot. Is Honduras safe? Is it safe for expatriates? Is it safe for tourists to come visit? Is it just a safe place because the media says it's the most dangerous place in the world? I hear that all the time. So let me introduce myself. My name is Pat Rogers. I am a internet guy that has been down here um, going on nine years and or more. And uh, I'm married to a Honduran. I've got 300 kids. I've been here for a while and I've seen a lot. I've seen most of the country. So from my point of view, is Honduras safe? All right, so there's a lot of things to think about when it comes to considering safety. Um, you know, it's not just criminals you have to worry about. Sometimes it's officials um, and it's people that have power to do things um, over you or for you when you're away from home and you're away from, you know, what you consider is an everyday right as an American or a Canadian or wherever you're from, stuff that we take for granted up there. Once you're in another country, it is different. So from my point of view, there's a lot of things that you have to keep an eye out for, but overall, is Honduras safe? My answer would be, yeah, relatively. Depends on where you go. Depends on what you do. Depends on the type of people you like to hang out with or talk to or you let close to you. Um, in my opinion, personally, Honduras is mo no more dangerous than anywhere else that we would consider dangerous as Americans in the United States. And I'm referring to places like Detroit, Michigan, um, Houston, Texas, Brooklyn, the Bronx. Uh, let's see, where else is rough? The... the Western seaboard, you know, let's say Seattle's could be pretty rough. Um, Los Angeles, San Francisco, hell, even in my home state, um, Fort Worth, San Antonio, Austin. There's a lot of places. <laughs> Wind Community, Canton, Texas. <clears throat> There's a lot of places that are pretty damn dangerous, um, in my opinion. Um, little background of me, I traveled the U.S. working as a union welder uh, for the Boilermakers Union. So I got to spend a lot of time in, in places throughout the United States working in plants, and I got a chance to sample the society there, the, the people there. Um, and after that, um, I left the country, came to Central America. I drove here, I didn't fly. Um, I drove through Mexico, I drove through Guatemala. It took a while, there was lots of events, so the, the, the trip ended up taking over a week um, to make in two to three different countries. So um, I got a taste of a, a little bit of taste of the Mexican society while I was there. Not a whole lot of the Guatemalan, but a lot of time in Honduras. Um, so I, I can now identify differences that I wouldn't have been able to do as just being a tourist, let's say, coming down here. So. If you think you might want to go to Central America, um, Honduras isn't that bad. The backdrop of this video, um, obviously I'm not showing my face, I'll do that real fast. Hey. All right, is uh, just my backyard basically. Um, so right now I just rent a place, tip to people, rent rentals in Honduras currently in 2020 are still relatively cheap compared to other places. It's one of the things that's kept me here. Um, this place, I'm not gonna say how much I get this place for, uh, but I've got a two bedroom, two bath house with the pool right here to the side over here. I've got a two, two story uh, loft apartment with a garage shop underneath and close to an acre of, of yard, let's say, half an acre of just yard, but a whole acre almost with everything here and completely surrounded in a concrete fence with two car gates and one entry gate. So, eh, I live in, this, in Honduras outside of La Ceiba. This is where I've frequented most of my time is in La Ceiba, outside of La Ceiba. I also lived in the Bay Islands, Bay Islands in Guanaja for a little while. Um, so I got a taste of that. And La Ceiba's, eh, it's interesting. It can be pretty rough. Um, 
other places in the country are pretty rough too, depending on where you're going. We all have been around those places that have rough neighborhoods. Um, you know, you know the neighborhoods I'm talking about. Usually low income, um, high density, you know, people kind of areas that you see a lot of people in the streets. Um, that's how Honduras is. You know, the in the states you think about these top neighborhoods or areas being maybe 10, 15, 20 percent of a city, depending on where you're at. But in Honduras, you're looking at 80 percent, I'd say at least. Um, in most places, that's the type of neighborhoods you're going to find. So treat those neighbor neighborhoods accordingly. Um, if it looks like low income, lots of people in the road, be careful going through there. You know, they're out here. They stop people, you know, just like you'd see in some places you drive off into some communities in the States. Um, there's enough people in the street they can easily block the road and block you in the front and the back and they can stop cars and go car to car if they want. Um, so that kind of stuff can happen here. It doesn't happen very often. I haven't seen it. Um, mostly just through the news in random parts of the country, but I haven't seen it personally. Um, but police aren't very common here. You see them in the roads running checkpoints. It's something you don't see in the States. Here it's free to have a police checkpoint anywhere they want and they can stop you for anything they want. They can stop you for no reason if they want. Um, and you have to comply. It's not like in the States. But um, that's really the only place you're going to see them. You're not going to see them patrolling too much, at least not around La Ceiba. Uh, the police are not a resource you turn to in the immediate threat of something. They're going to take their time to get to where you're at. Unless they know you, they're close, you call them and express how bad the situation is they might get to you if you're living in a rural area and you know them they might be able to get to you in five to seven minutes maybe which isn't a bad response time but still you're not you know, I mean they have to know you if they don't know you and you're just any old joe and you're in a regular area response time for police are anywhere from 15 20 minutes so if you're under attack you and your whole family could be dead in that time so think about that and keep that in mind if you're going to spend any time in this area Go out in broad daylight if you're not, you know, going to be staying time. If you're just a tourist, you know, stay around touristy areas. Don't go off into weird places with uh, some guy with a bus that says he runs tours. You know, make sure that you stay with official companies that you can backtrack online. If they don't have an online presence, I wouldn't trust them. Even though in Honduras, 80% of companies still aren't online when it comes to tourism, the, the legit ones and the people you can trust are. So um, if they're not online, don't trust them. Do your homework before you come. Plan your trip out. I see people asking. There are smart people um, that get on Facebook and social media and they start hitting up groups of, of expatriates in Honduras, let's say, asking how things are, getting recommendations. Where should they go? Where should they stay? You know, do that kind of research. Don't come down here blind um, unless you're badass and you ain't scared and you know how to handle yourself. If you're one of those kind of people, come down. You know, without a plan, it's fine. I bumped my stand. Uh, you may have a good time. Me, I came down here. Um, I'm not saying I'm a badass, by the way. Don't, don't take it that way. But I came down here without a plan over nine years ago. Just as a temporary thing, kind of help out some family that were coming down uh, to drive down um, so that person didn't have to drive alone. Ended up staying and just looked for opportunities and took them and was able to build up into something pretty good. Um, I just got lucky, let's say, but I don't recommend it. Like I said, unless you got nothing to lose and, and you've already been down these kind of roads before. And for me in the past, I've done lots of roads. I was in the military a short stint. I was homeless for a short stint. I was in, um, bad crowds doing bad things. Even though I'm, I'm not a bad person, really, even back then I would try to, to, to only do bad things to bad people, let's say. Um, no, I didn't like doing bad things to good people. Um, but I've walked lots of paths, and I was able to come here and just flow with it, you know. And something else, when in Rome, do like the Romans. I say that for any country, because for people who have never left their country, never experienced another culture, that's where people have problems, that their expectations and, and um, thoughts on how something should go or how the day should work based on where they came from 
may not be how things go in other places. And if your expectations are unyielding, then you're going to have problems. Um, try to be open. Try to understand that things do work differently in other places. Don't get con confrontational with people when they don't meet your expectation. And don't hold it against the place if it doesn't meet your expectation, especially if you've never been anywhere before. That's one thing that gives people problems. I've seen lots of people come out here, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on property, think it's beautiful, because it's beautiful. I mean, like I said, look at this pool. It's like this year round just about. It's a beautiful climate. And the mountains and, and history and, and Caribbean and all this stuff's real close and it's nice. Um, you try to focus on that. Don't try to focus on any of the other stuff. Just go with it. Me, I got bad health, heart problems, cardiovascular problems because I can't deal with the driving here. That's one thing. Um, if you're seriously considering about spending some time in Honduras, especially on the mainland, you better be a damn good driver and be able to identify problems before they happen uh, because the, the roads here aren't nothing like the states or anywhere else that have any like actual policing of roadways and, and straight legit traffic laws. They got traffic laws here, but they, they don't police it. People do what they want, where they want, when they want. They'll run you off the road, they don't care. If it looks like you are somebody that could run off the road, they will. Just, you, just to keep from getting people to pull out in front of you, you have to drive aggressively and be openly aggressively aggressive on the road just to prevent people from trying to pull out in front of you and let's say you can't stop because you drive a giant ass 3500 Dodge Ram Cummins 5.9 like I do and these guys want to pull out in front of you with a moment's notice better thank God I got six tires and no load because if I had a load you'd be a dead son of a bitch but that's how it is here if you can deal with that is Honduras safe? yeah I can deal with it I figured out how to deal with it. Lots of people figure out how to deal with it. And after you figure out how to deal with it, it ain't so bad as long as you can stay off the geopolitical crap. Because that's the other thing that sucks down here. And you learn when you spend time in other countries. The geopolitical stuff is not like in your country. The governments down here run differently. The people view the governments down here differently. They're willing to do things different than what we do in the States. So be ready for that. I remember the first two weeks I was here, I'd never seen a protest in my life. So the first two weeks I was here, uh, my family has property in La Ceiba on the west side and towards the international airport on the beach. It's not too far from downtown, uh, but to get there, you have to go out to the main road, which is a two lane highway that serves the north coast, which sucks. That's how it is. You go out to the main road and you have to cross the bridge because it's the only bridge you can cross to get into that part of the country. One bridge, by the way, one freaking two lane bridge saggy in all the sections but hey that's that's how it is so i get up to the bridge and i notice that the bridge there's really no traffic there's lots of huddles of people in the front and one, you know, on each side of the bridge and uh but i'm driving up at the time a 2001 dodge ram 1500 uh four by four 360 engine jacked up 33 inch tires short wheelbase you know short wide kind of truck and it's big compared to muscle cars here so when you drive those kind of vehicles, usually people just get out of your way. Plus, I was the only one in a vehicle that could drive over all the chunks of concrete and large stones they had peppered all over the bridge. All the other cars had to stop because they couldn't go through there. It's a minefield of, uh, you know, basketball-sized rocks and uh, chunks of concrete because uh, there was a protest going on, and it was the teachers' union protesting pay, and they had went and blocked the bridge. So at one side of the bridge, you had on you know the family's property side you had the protesters and then the bridge was covered in peppered stuff and then the other side of the bridge there was a, a, a whole battalion of police and riot gear pretty much and me being a dumbass texan you know fresh out of the country never been anywhere in my life really except for the u.s but i decided hey i can get through there i gotta go to town man i ain't gonna let this stop me and i drove right through all of the minefield of rocks and concrete left everybody else there and i drove up to cross the bridge and it goes up this little hill um if anybody's been in la Ceiba and knows the danto bridge they know which one i'm talking about um and there was a a row like a long line there was probably 30 police in ride gear with a you know a battlefront lined up shoulder to shoulder blocking the road and i just drove around them uh, <laughs> 
kind of went around them off the shoulder, passed, kept on going. I had the windows down, waved when I went past. You know, they saw I was a gringo, and they didn't say nothing. And I just went on. And I was like, holy crap, I've never seen that in my life. You know, and I didn't realize till later because I was still kind of young at the time um, how dangerous and tense that situation was, and I just drove right through the middle of it like an idiot. Uh, but that's the kind of stuff you're going to see down here, and I do not recommend anybody doing that. I just saw the other day recently the taxi union protested and in San Pedro Sula they were blocking the roads and there were people on motorcycles trying to go through the roadblocks they were blocking the roads with their taxis <clears throat> and they grabbed these people off their off their motorcycles and start beating them in the street because they were trying to bust their their roadblock so if you're a tourist guy or not you know got seasoned roots in this country you see a roadblock just avoid it those are very volatile places you don't want to go, especially if you don't speak Spanish and you can't tell what people are saying around you. Just stay away from it. But all things considered, it's not that bad. Don't let the media scare you or the State Department with their travel warnings scare you too much. Do pay attention to them. Um, but for the most part, they don't put travel warnings out for Honduras that often, considering it's the most dangerous place or country in the, the world. You know, considering they only put a travel advisory out maybe once every couple years, um, think about that. It ain't that bad.